Welcome back, students. Today we're going to talk about political parties. We're going to discuss the roles of political parties, types of parties that we have in the United States, and the people and groups that make up those parties. So let's get started with the basics. First of all, what is a political party? It's a group of people who seek to control the government by winning an election and holding public office. So think about uh, the two most common, uh, widely known examples of political parties in the United States. You've got the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Uh, most of what we see them do is efforts to win elections at different levels of government. They want to win those elections so they can hold that office, they can be that president or that governor or that mayor or that legislator, control that part of the government and make the government do the things that they want it to do. Therefore, parties are organized to win elections and the way that they influence some kind of control over an election is by controlling who the candidates are going to be. Political parties control candidate selection. That is their purpose. They uh, pick which one of them is going to be the candidate for whatever office. So think about how during the 2016 primary season, the Democratic Party selected uh, Hillary Clinton to be its candidate for president, and the Republican Party selected Donald Trump to be its candidate for president. These two face off in the general election in November. Political parties have levels, just like uh, our government in general. There's a national level, a state level, and a local level. And this organization is really important so that these parties can influence um, politics and government e at each one of those levels. So at the national level, You've got the Democratic National Committee or the Republican National Committee. This is an organization that works to achieve party goals at the national level, win national elections, and make sure that national policy is being made in a way that favors their party. But underneath of that, each state has a state-level party. So in Virginia, we have the Democratic Party of Virginia and the Republican Party of Virginia. And likewise, you see parties influencing and being involved at, at, at the local level. Uh, a Democratic Party of Charlottesville, for example, or another uh, county, town, or even neighborhood or precinct level um, organization that is connected to that, that larger political party. Here's uh, the basic list of roles that political parties play. So as we go through these, I want you to think about a real-life example that you might have seen or heard about in the news of political parties doing this thing. Parties have a role that involves selection. They select candidates for political office. Political parties also raise money to pay for getting their candidates elected. These are called campaign costs. You know, a candidate will run for an election. The work that they do in trying to get, trying to win that election is called their campaign. And they get a substantial amount of money from their party to pay for the cost of conducting that campaign. Political parties are heavily involved in uh, the campaign process. They um, attempt to win voters over to their cause by identifying important issues that the, the public is interested in or concerned about in any given moment. And even if a party loses an election, their job is not over because oftentimes what the losing party after an election will do is what we refer to as monitor the party in power. So if one party wins the presidency or the seats in Congress or the governorship of a state, it's oftentimes the opponent, the other party, that uh, keeps an eye and keeps a check on what the party in power is doing uh, in hopes of uh, maybe drumming up support to help them win the election next time around. So there are two sort of categories of parties in the United States. Uh, we operate under what's referred to as a two-party system, but that doesn't mean that we just have two parties. We have two categories of parties, and those parties are major parties or minor parties. We just so happen to have two major parties, and that's why our system is referred to as a two-party system. And our major parties at this moment are the Democrats' Democratic Party and the Republicans, the Republican Party. These 
groups are major parties because they have the largest organizations. They have the largest membership, the largest number of people that consider themselves to be one or the other. And because of that, and because of several other reasons, they have the most influence on uh, the political process and elections and how government unfolds. But that doesn't mean that we're limited to just two choices because there are lots of minor parties. And these are also called third parties. Again, going back to that term or that idea of a two-party system. If a party is sort of outside the two major parties in a two-party system, they're often referred to as a third party. Uh, but don't get confused. This doesn't mean that we just have three parties. This just means that there's an entire category of party that uh, is um, classified as minor parties. So these tend to be smaller, not widely as supported. You don't run into as many people who consider them to be uh, a member of one of these or the other. Think about examples from the news and politics today. We have Libertarians, uh, Green Party members, uh, Socialist Party. These are all groups that uh, are attempting to do the same thing as the Democrats and the Republicans. Uh, they may not be as successful yet. Their, their influence may be uh, small or minor or growing. Uh, they're not as uh, involved in the political process for a variety of reasons, but they're there and they perform an important role nonetheless. So who makes up political parties? Well, political parties, uh, since they want to win elections, have to appeal to the largest number of voters that they can. So we oftentimes describe political parties as a team made up of larger numbers of smaller teams. And to use the sort of technical language that we use to describe this, we tend to think of political parties as a coalition made up of different factions. So the coalition is the larger group or the larger organization, and factions are the smaller groups that make up that larger team. And if you look at these two charts at the top of the screen, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense to you. So the coalition is the party. Here, for example, is the Republican Party coalition. What makes up that coalition? Lots and lots and lots of different people from lots and lots and lots of different places. Republican voters can be Republican voters on the Republican team because they're pro-life, uh, because they support gun rights, because they support evangelical Christian values. Think about the fact that all three of these teams, these groups of people, don't have that much in common with one another, but they are united together underneath the coalition of the Republican Party and uh, teamed up uh, can work to make that party um, as successful as they hope it to be. And likewise, on the Democratic side, you've got the Democratic Party coalition. It's made up, again, of different groups of people that don't have a lot in common, just based on that one issue or that one idea, but are united under the Democratic Party banner in hopes of making that uh, group, the successful group in the election. So think about people who belong to labor unions, or people who might be a, a member of a minority group, or people who are pro-choice, or have another uh, sort of liberal social uh, value. These people team together, the Democratic Party brings them together under one banner, and they work together to win those elections. So here's the connection between um, ideology and um, party membership. And you're going to have to fill this in on your chart on your own, so listen carefully. Remember that the uh, on the political spectrum, you've got sort of three major stops. You've got the left, which is the liberal side. You've got the right, which is the uh, conservative side. And you've got the center, which some people can, uh, might term uh, moderate. How do these link up to parties? Well, left and liberal, in this day and age, tends to link up most closely with the Democratic Party. Right conservative tends to link up with the conserv uh, excuse me, the Republican Party. People who uh, consider themselves to be moderates in the political center uh, oftentimes 
refer to themselves as independent when it comes to party identification. So they are not someone who would consider themselves to be a Democrat or a Republican. Instead, they are, un, uh, they are independent in the middle. And let's finish up by talking about party strategy. How do parties attempt to win their goal? For a major party, the goal is oftentimes winning the election. So here are the things that the uh, major parties have to do in order to uh, win that election. They, of course, need uh, majority support of the voters. So a major party will work hard to not only win over their end of the political spectrum, but also try and appeal to those moderates or independents in the center. The people that they are appealing to on their side of the political spectrum, so for Democrats, the people on the left, or Republicans as people on the right, is referred to as their base. These are loyal voters. They support the party. Uh, they're probably always going to support the party um, because of their position on the political spectrum. So the people that these parties have to appeal to is, in fact, the, uh, the independents in the middle. And you'll see all the time examples of Republicans and Democrats uh, promoting ideas that are designed to appeal to those independents in the middle and draw them over to their side. For third parties, oftentimes the, the goal for a third party is addressing an issue. Third parties historically have not done very well when it comes to winning elections, but oftentimes they can uh, organize around uh, a smaller set of issues or even a single issue and uh, use their presence as a way to highlight or emphasize that, uh, that issue. So they perform an important role in giving us another option, another place to express views that don't fit into maybe what the Democrats or the Republicans happen to be emphasizing at that moment. All right, make sure your notes are in good shape, and we're going to talk about this in class, and I'll see you there.